I want to share with you what changed my life. So I grew up in the church. I thank God for my heritage. But, but I grew up, you know, and thinking that being taught that whatever happens to you is God's will. Whatever happens to you is God's will. I couldn't swallow that even growing up as a teenager and, and as a young adult. I couldn't swallow that. I couldn't, I couldn't believe that everything that happened to me, the good, the bad, the ugly, was God's will. Because I just believed that God was a good God. And seriously, way back then, I believed God was for me. Even when people might be against me, I believed that God was for me. So it wasn't until Kim and I, we were in college, that I got a hold of a book, a Kenneth Hagin book. I got a hold of a book on the authority of the believer, and it absolutely changed my life. Now, I want to tell you something that's so important, this message, because if you don't have a revelation of the authority of the believer, you'll live as a victim and not a victor. I would say out of all the series that I've done this year, if I only could pick one, only could have one, it would be this one, the authority of the believer. It changed the way I live. So here we go. Y'all ready to go on a journey with me? Yeah. The authority of the believer. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All what? Power. All authority has been given to me, not just in heaven, but praise God on earth. Because you and I right now, we're on earth. And so I want to know how to have a little heaven on earth. I don't want to have to wait till heaven to have heaven. So all authority... Everybody say, all, all has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19. So go, therefore, take this authority, make disciples. He's talking about their ministry. He's talking about their assignment. He's talking about why they're on the earth. He's talking about why he didn't take them with him when he ascended to heaven, because they had an assignment. They have a mission. There's a will of God for their life. Notice, please note this. You and I can't fulfill our destiny without authority. You and I can't fulfill our destiny, the will of God, the plan of God, without a revelation of the authority of God. He said, I have all authority. Now, Adam had it, your great, 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 great grandfather, Adam in the Garden of Eden, okay? But he lost it through sin. He lost it through sin. The second Adam came, that's Jesus, and brought back what the first Adam lost. So now Jesus has the authority. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. He spoiled principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. He defeated the devil and got back the keys of authority. Now he's given it to mankind, his believers, his followers, those who are born again, saved Christians. But he said, now take this authority and now understand it, walk in it, live it, release it, and go fulfill my purpose for your life. Verse 20 teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So what Jesus had authority over, big idea. Every sermon needs a big idea. This is the big idea. What Jesus had authority over, you and I, as his followers, have authority over also. Because the authority that he gained back, he gave to you. The authority that he gained back, he gave to you. He didn't have a different kind of authority to give us. He gave us the same authority that he bought and purchased with his blood. So what Jesus had authority over, you have authority over. Next slide. What did he have authority over? Demons. He had authority over demons. You and I as Christians in the body of Christ are experiencing more satanic, demonic, spiritual warfare than ever before. You know it's true. You're facing more opposition, persecution, stress, trauma, you know, burnout, fatigue, weariness, upset, can't sleep, insomnia, depression than ever before. What is that? Satanic warfare, demonic activity. Who are you coming up with this, Pastor? From the Bible. The Bible says as you near the end of the age, more demonic activity will take place. We're there. Number two, he had authority over sickness. Well, that's good to know. You do know that sickness doesn't come from God, right? You do know that sickness is not the will of God. Sickness came with sin. Sickness came with the curse. You have authority over sickness because Jesus did. He gave it to us. Thank you, Lord. 
Number three, you have authority over bad weather. Really, Pastor? Isn't it just the way that it is? Well, it is the way that it is, but the prince and the power of the air or weather is the devil, not the newscaster, not God. It's in Ephesians, New Testament, chapter two, verse two. The prince and the power of the air atmosphere is Satan. He's behind any bad weather that destroys and brings destruction. God is not behind that. Number four. Now, we looked at all this two weeks ago. Last week, we had Terry Seville Foy. Did you enjoy Terry? Yeah. Last week, we had her with us. And the uh, be week before, though, we were teaching on this. So you can go back to our website and pick it up. Number four, he had authority over sin and hurtful habits. We don't have to live with it, put up with it, make excuses for it, or say we just have to live with it. We can do something about sinful, hurtful habits, okay? Then number five, he had authority over lack and poverty. Thank you, Jesus. He's greater than recession, than inflation, and gas prices, grocery prices, utilities going up, insurance going up. It is for the church. It is for the ministry. It is for you. It is for me. But thank God, God's will for you and me is prosperity, abundance, and more than enough. Next slide. Authority is made up of, okay, pastor, I get it. Jesus had it, gave it to us. We have over what he had over. But really, what does it mean, authority? How do I grow in it? How do I develop it? How do I walk in it? What's the recipe? What's the formula? What makes up authority? I want to be more bold, pastor. I want to be a more bold witness. I want to be more confident in my calling. I want to have more assurance. How do I do that? How do I wrap my head around, okay, Jesus had authority. We're supposed to have authority, but how do I develop it? How do I increase in it? How do I become bold as a lion? How do I become bold as a lion? That's scripture, by the way. Authority is made up of three things, and we'll deal more with it next weekend. But number one, it's made up of righteousness, righteousness. Can you say that with me? Righteousness. Righteousness simply means right with God. Righteousness means right standing with God, knowing who you are in Christ. Let me give you some scriptures for that. Next slide, guys. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any person be what? Come on, I can't hear you. In what? Okay, there it is right there. You got to know who you are in Christ. You're not a loser. You're not a whiner. You're not a victim. You're not a beggar. You don't bear to get by. You're not defeated. You don't stay depressed. You don't stay down. You don't feel sorry for yourself. Come on, somebody. You're not a victim. You're a victor. But you got to know who you are in Christ, right? Old things pass away. Old patterns, old thoughts, old verbiage, old confession, old image, self-image. Old, old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. You got to spend the rest of your Christianity finding out what is new to you in him. New patterns, new talk, new walk, new habits, new relationships, new priorities, new desires. Amen. Next script, next guys, verse 21. For he has made him to be sin for us, God the Father to God the Son. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the what? Righteousness of God in him. That means right standing with God. You, need, you spend your whole Christian walk getting revelation of who you are in Christ, in him, in whom. Okay, next slide, guys. For if by one man's offense death reigned, that's Adam, the first Adam, if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more than which they receive abundance of grace and the gift of what? Righteousness. Remember, authority is made up of righteousness, knowing who you are in Christ. The old you is buried. The new you has come. Of grace and the gift of righteousness, when you understand that, what do you do? Reign in life. What does that mean? You win. You overcome. You're an overcomer. You're a winner. You got born again. You were born to win. 
But look at this. You reign, not whine. Feel sorry for yourself. Compare yourself. Feel insecure. Don't like yourself. Angry at the world. Angry at God. No, 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 no. You can reign in life. You can be a winner, overcomer, successful. How? Through the righteousness of God in Christ. You become bold, confident, take risk. You step out. You keep moving forward. You bounce back. You have resilience. You don't quit. You don't stop. You have the ability to outlast the storm. Can we praise God? Come on, let's give God a praise for righteousness. We'll talk more about that. Number two, redemption. Number two is redemption. So, so authority is made up of righteousness. And then number two, it's made up of redemption. You got to know who you are in Christ, but also you got to know what belongs to you through redemption. So the scripture for that, guys, Galatians chapter three, verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, quoting scripture. For it is written, cursed is everyone who gets crucified on a cross. Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. When Jesus hung on the cross of the tree, he took our curse on him. Next scripture, Galatians 3.14. Why did he do it? So that the blessing, he redeemed you from the curse so he could release a blessed life on you, your family, and your children. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles in Christ Jesus. See the term in Christ Jesus? There's an in Christ, in him, in whom. That the blessing of Abraham, so we're not to go around feeling sorry for ourselves. We're to go around confessing and affirming Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. I am redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. And through doing that, you begin to reign over your circumstances. Rise above your feelings and your circumstances. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise. Oh, hallelujah. How do you receive it? By faith. You don't receive it by feeling, but you receive it by faith. So authority is made up of, I forgot, the first star was righteousness. The second one is redemption. Next slide, guys. Number three, resistance. See, you are in spiritual warfare, and sometimes we as Christians want to know, I hear about spiritual warfare. I hear about demons and evil spirits and the devil, and I hear about spiritual, the good fight of faith. What does all that mean? Pastor, break it down for me. I want to know, what is spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is resisting the devil. His lies, his strategies, his tactics, his pressure, his thoughts. Spiritual warfare as a Christian boils down to that, resistance. Authority means you have the position to change your condition. You have the position to change your circumstances, that you're seated with Christ in heavenly places, that you need to know what to receive and what to resist. Me as growing up in the church, which I'm thankful for, but they told me to receive everything and anything because that was God's will. I couldn't buy that. I couldn't see God doing bad things to me. So then I got the revelation in college on the book of The Authority of the Believer by Kenneth Hagin. Changed my life. I began to study the scripture for myself. Hey, I'm supposed to resist Satan, demons, evil thoughts, lack, poverty, sickness, depression, insomnia, panic attacks. I'm supposed to resist that in the name of Jesus, right? That's, that's authority of the believer. You just don't swallow everything that happens to you as God's will for you. Okay, so next, next slide, guys. Scripture for that is James 4, 7. Therefore, submit to God. I tried that, Pastor, and, and nothing worked for me. I resist the devil and things got worse. Question, question, are you under authority? If you're not under authority, the authority won't, can't, don't work in our life. If I'm rebellious, if I'm out of my role as a father, a mother, a husband, a wife, an employee, an employer, 
if I'm, if I'm in rebellion, if I won't submit to authority, then the authority won't work for me. Notice the word submit before resist. I have to submit to authority. I have to be under God's authority. And where do we find God's authority? In the Bible. Can I make it real simple? Break it down. If, if I'm not submitted to the word, the word won't work for me. If I'm lying, cheating, stealing, gossiping, if I'm not tithing, giving, and serving, if I'm not praising, but I'm critical, complaining, and griping, then I'm not submitting my flesh to the word. I'm not submitting my emotions, my feelings, my desires to the word. Submission comes before resisting. So I have to learn the power of being under authority before I can walk in authority. So submission comes before resistance. Therefore, submit to God through his word. Resist the devil, and he will run in terror from you. That word resist in the Greek is continuous present tense action. It means you never stop doing it. How do you do it? In Jesus' name. Stop it. In Jesus' name, I rebuke you. In Jesus' name, you can't do this. I take authority in the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb, and I overcome. That's how that works. Stop messing with my marriage. Stop messing with my health. Stop messing with my kids, my grandkids. Stop messing with my ministry, my career, my relationships. Devil, go in Jesus' name. And he has to go. He has to go. Next scripture for this. 1 Peter 5, 8, so spiritual warfare, in a nutshell, one word is resistance. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, notice, is not God. God's not our problem. It's the devil. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Notice, he can't devour everybody. He's looking who he can devour. He's looking who those who think everything that happens is God's will. He's looking for those who put the responsibility on God on that which should be man's responsibility, right? God had authority, gave us his authority. What he had authority over, we have authority over. Next verse, next verse, verse nine. So what do we do? What do we do? He's seeking whom he may devour. What do we do? Lay down, give up, quit, be wimps, waver, pansies, feel sorry for us. No, we stand up. We know who we are in Christ, righteousness. We know we're redeemed from the curse of the law. So what do we do? We resist him. We say, I'm not going to put up with this devil. I'm not going to be a loser. I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. I'm not going to live depressed. I'm not going to be down. I'm not going to be envious. I'm not going to be critical. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to be a victim. Devil, get out of here. In Jesus' name, I bind you. I rebuke you. I command you. Go in Jesus' name. Resist him steadfast in faith. How's it work? It's not a formula. It's not a formula. It works by faith. It's not a formula. It works by faith. Knowing that what you're going through, a lot of other brothers and sisters are going through the very same thing. Next, can, can you handle just a little bit more? Okay. Philippians 2 verse 9. This could change the rest of your day. It could change the rest of your week. It could change the rest of your month. You change the rest of your year today. You're in the right place at the right time. And I sure do love you. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him. Who? Jesus. Gave him the name which is above every other name. So the name of Jesus is higher than cancer, poverty, bigotry, racism, jealousy, envy, Hurt, pain, tuberculosis, brain tumor, cancer, lumps, bumps, bills, right? Contention, strife, those are all names. The name of Jesus is above those names. The name of Jesus has more power than the name of cancer, arthritis, tuberculosis, brain cancer. I love that. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus... Every knee will bow of things that are in heaven. Guess what? Where we are on earth. And guess what? You want to know where hell is? Under the earth. A lot of people, when you say hell's in the center of the earth, say, where'd you get that? Right here. Right here. Hell is in the 
under the earth, in the center of the earth, okay? But notice the name of Jesus is greater than any other name in heaven, earth, and hell. The authority of the believer is released with that name. But it's not a formula. I can't go out and say, in the name of Jesus, go. And if I'm in rebellion with my husband or my wife, my mom or my, father, my, mom or my dad, talking about my boss or my pastor, how'd that get in there, pastor? <laughs> it won't work for me. It just won't work for me, okay? Next slide, as the team comes out, John 14, 14. If you, so we got to do something, right? We got to take responsibility. If you ask anything, how are we to ask? In my name, I will do it. If you ask anything, so when you're praying, you should always pray in the name of Jesus. When you're speaking to your circumstances, when you're speaking to your body, your feeling, your emotions, you're speaking over your house, you should always declare what you're asking for in the name of Jesus. Because the authority that's been granted to us, gifted to us, is released through that name. Okay, next slide. Said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but those who do not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. And these signs, signs should follow a believer. What you're believing, you're becoming. What you're believing, you're becoming. What you're believing is revealed in what's following you, the fruit. Signs should follow us. We don't follow signs. And these signs will follow those who believe. Well, what signs? In my what? Name. How do you release the authority of the believer? Using the name of Jesus. Using the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I'm going to sleep tonight. In Jesus' name, you give your beloved sweet sleep. In Jesus' name, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, you will cast out devils. Notice the first sign of a believer and the authority they're walking in is you have power over demonic activity. Evil spirits, harassing spirits, hurting spirits, lying spirits. You've been given authority. Tell them to shut up. Praise break. Can you praise God for the word? Wow. So all, all that happens in his name, all that happens in his name. Takeaways. What do we do then, Pastor? Got to have takeaways from a homily, homily. Got to have takeaways from a sermon, a, 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 a time together, the message. What's the takeaways? Here's what you need to do. Here's what I need to do. Giving you a whole lot of information. And you say, Pastor, doesn't a lot of people know this? Listen, I've been around people that's been here for 20 years and they still don't use the name. Hallelujah. Come on now. So we may say, oh, I know that. But then listen to somebody talk, and you know they don't know it. They don't have the revelation. They don't have a clue. Okay? So I, I want you to do this. Pray this prayer, Ephesians 1, 17 through 19. And you pray this prayer, and this is the prayer that you pray every day. This morning, I prayed it for you. This morning, I prayed it for you. You pray this prayer daily. This morning, my little alarm went off at 530, got in the shower, and I'm praying for you. And I'm praying this Ephesian prayer, okay, as your pastor. So what do we do? Number one, we pray this prayer every day. And what does it do? It tells us what Jesus has done for us. You want to pray, God, give me revelation of my redemption, of my righteousness, of my resistance. Give me revelation on how to walk this authority out, how to build it, get bolder, confident, more assured, not weak, not waver, not give up, not be a pansy, but be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. God, show me what Jesus has done for me. Number two, what belongs to me? Lord, I want to know what's mine in Christ. We've all been given an inheritance, right? We're joint heirs, so we want to know what belongs to us. Healing belongs to you. Abundance belongs to you. Victory belongs to you. Peace and joy, longevity belongs to you. Yes. Amen. Protection 
promotion, prosperity belongs to you, my brother and sister. And then number three, God, show me how to walk in this authority. And we pray that every day. I'm done. Do y'all get something today on the authority? Come on, let's thank God for the word. I want to thank you for watching the broadcast today. We pray that it was a, uh, helped you grow spiritually on authority of the believer. What a powerful concept. Like I shared today, you know, it changed my life when I got a hold of this revelation that the authority of the believer, that what we bind is bound and what we loose is loosed. Man, what a powerful, powerful principle. I pray that it absolutely transformed your life today. If we can help you in any way, shape, or form, reach out to us, go to our website. But before we go off the air today, I wanna to ask you the most important question. Where will you go when you die? Have you made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life? If you haven't, I'd like to lead you in a prayer today. You know, really, Jesus is the answer. He has the solution to all of our problems. And you know, our little motto around here, God is for you today. He loves you, He cares about you. He knows what you're going through. So you would say, Pastor, I wanna make Jesus the Lord of my life. Or, I'm a believer, but I wanna come back. I wanna rededicate, recommit my life to you. So pray this prayer with me right now. Just say it out loud right there where you're at. Heavenly Father, I repent. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He died for me and He rose again. Jesus, come into my heart. I receive you now as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Take my life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to God's Forever Family. You know, if you're here locally in the St. Louis area, I'd like to personally invite you to come join me this Sunday at 9-11, our Spanish service at two o'clock. If you're not local, I encourage you to find a church to plug into where you can grow, become all that God wants you to become. Thank you so much for watching the program. If it blessed you, would you share, like, and share with a friend? Until next week, don't forget, God is for you. Thanks for joining us through the God is for you experience. You know, we all want to be part of something bigger than ourselves. Our mission is to lead people to a God who is for them and help them discover his purpose for their life. And we would like for you to be part of it. If this teaching has been a blessing for your life, we invite you to do a random act of kindness and share this experience. A random act of kindness can be paying for someone else's coffee or checking in with a family member, friend or coworker and spreading this week's teaching. By sharing this experience with them, you're making a way for them to receive the blessing of this powerful teaching. You can also invite them to visit our website, where we are continuously adding tools to grow strong in our faith. Here you'll find current and upcoming events to build community and stay connected with everything that's happening at Church on the Rock. We want you to know that we love you, care for you, and constantly pray for you. We'll see you next time. Until then, don't forget, God is for you.